All right, good afternoon. Today is June 12th, 2020, and this is my first official sturgeon fishing trip of the year, so you guys can guess how excited I am to be out here. Uh, today we are here at the Snake River. As of right now, I'm out here by myself, and then uh, later on, my buddy Nick will meet me down here. He doesn't get off work until three o'clock, so once he gets off work, he'll make his way down here to fish with me. And so I figured I'd come out first and just scope out the areas. And so I came over to this spot right here. It's a little point and this is one of the spots where we normally fish for sturgeon. At least for this stretch of the river. And so uh, the water is definitely fast. So I'm just hoping that my 8 ounce weight will actually stick to the bottom. Because if not then we might have some trouble <laughs> trying to get our bait to stick in one spot. But I'm gonna rig up real quick because I really want to get to fishing and then uh, once I'm done rigging I'll show you guys my rig and stuff like that and we'll get to fishing and hopefully we can land a fish today. Here's my main line. This is 50 pound maximum monofilament. This is my main line. And then I have slid on there a sinker slider. This is made by Bottom Dwellers Tackle. First time using it. And then down here I've got 30 pound mono tied to an 8 ounce weight. And then we move this up. And then right here, this orange one, this is a plastic bead. With my setup right now, this plastic orange bead serves more as a visual representation. And then uh, this one right here, this is a rubber bead. So the difference between these two beads is that this gray one or this green one right here, this one's rubber and the orange one is plastic. So since this one is rubber, it has a little bit more cushion than a plastic. And so this one's purpose is to save my knot from getting damaged when this sinker slider is moving back and forth my line. So although the plastic bead does a decent job at it, the theory is rubber has more cushion and the rubber is softer so it should do a better job than the plastic at saving my knot. And then this knot right here is a uni knot. I use that for pretty much everything I fish for and the sturgeon fishing is no different. So I have a uni knot tied to this crane swivel. And this crane swivel is rated for I believe 80 pound or 100 pound which is plenty. And then right here is a 100 pound Dacron braid. And again this is a uni knot tied to this eye of the swivel. And then I have it tied to an ADOT barbless octopus gamagatsu hook. I also have a uni knot tied here. And then for bait, you guys saw me do it. This is just a piece of crappie that I have tied onto the shank. And that's key when you're fishing barbless. If you don't tie down your bait and you're casting it, a lot of times your bait will actually just slide out of your hook and then you just don't have bait on your hook. So one thing whenever you're using a barbless hook, a good idea is to always tie down your bait. Just tie it around somewhere on the body of your bait and then just tie it to the eye of your hook. I mean, there are some people who are much better at tying it, but to me, as long as the bait just doesn't fall off the hook, then that's a success. So that's the rig right there. The wave's roaring. I'm not even sure if you guys can hear me talking right now. I'm talking pretty loud just so that you guys can hear me. So I forgot to tell you guys, but my rod is the ugly stick, big water rod. This is a 12 foot extra heavy. It's rated for 25 to 50 pound line. And then for my reel, I have the Shimano Torium 30HG. And again, I have 50 pound monofilament by Maxima uh, reeled onto here. So it's a pretty simple setup. I have my rod holder right here and we're gonna cast over here and we'll see if we can get our weight to sit over here. I haven't casted in a long time, so we'll see how this goes. Bird's nest on the first try. It's 
just gonna reel in and try it again. Take two. Oh my gosh. All right, take three. My reel is not set correctly, so, so I have to play around with it. Hopefully right now I have the reel settings correct. That way it doesn't give me a bird's nest. Sometimes it takes you a little while before you can fine tune your reel, especially if you haven't sturgeon fished in like 10 months. So that being said, we're gonna give this another shot. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking, no bird's nest on that cast. Just a perfect smooth cast. Finally got my, my reel adjustments a little bit better. Now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna try to make our weight sit on the bottom. So basically, I'm just thumbing it and then I stop it. And then I just watch my rod tip to make sure that it stops. If it's still bouncing, which you'll feel it, just let some line go. And I keep doing this until it gets stuck, like right now. Yep, it's stuck. You can see, rod is bent, the line stopped moving. So, there we go. Feel a lot more confident with that cast. Basically at this point right here, there's the main channel and I'm trying to cast so that my bait goes into that main channel. But again, with this current, like it's kind of hard to get my bait to stick in there because it's just getting pushed downstream. And so we're just gonna have to wait it out and see if we get lucky here. Could have done better, but oh well. It's slippery down here. All right, so it is 5.30 p.m. After fishing at that spot, that first spot for like three hours, decided to call it quits because the current was way too fast and I couldn't get my bait to sit where I wanted because where I wanted my bait to sit was literally in the middle of the current and the current was just too crazy. So um, I waited for Nick to show up and then discussed a little bit and so we moved a little bit further down river over here the current doesn't seem as crazy so we actually got relatively decent spots in terms of where our bait is in the river and so where we're fishing here the channel is actually closer to this side of the shore so i think we're right in the middle of the channel so we got about three hours of daylight to fish and we'll see if we can pull one tonight if not then we'll probably stay here for tomorrow I don't know, depending how the fish goes, maybe we'll move, maybe we won't. No, no way. That's crazy. Yeah, you got a, that's a fish, dude. Oh, that's a fish, dude. Woo! Let's go! Let's go! Go! Fish on! <laughs> I'm gonna chase this fish down. Please don't hit. No, 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 no. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like wing it under. Oh, 
I missed it. Good maneuvering. <laughs> Just pay attention to your rod too. My, my rod's not even out. Oh. See, he's right out the shore, man. Hey, Nick. I think you just put the camera here and I might need you to go land him. Okay. Yeah, just, just set it up somewhere down there. Yeah, so I can see. Oh, here he goes. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to go. All right, you want to fight him? Sure. Dude, this might be the only fish we catch, man. All right, good point, good point, hey, good point. Here you go. I got it. I got the camera. All right. Woo! Bang! My turn. I'm gonna run back over there and get a tape measure. Keep him on, Nick. I got him. Damn, guys. Like what he said, I didn't think we were gonna catch one tonight. Oh, shoot, that's a frayed line. Oh, yeah, no, we're not. Dude, he's right at the shore, dude. I think he's right at the shore. Is he right there? I can't. I can't Look at the spool. Is it? Dude, he's right there, man. Whenever you get straight away from him, just like fish right there. Yeah, let me see. Here, yeah, you go. Yeah. Oh. You, Here, go. Come and go. you go. You go. Tell me about it, dude. He's right at the shore, Nick. He's right there. He's right there, dude. Yeah, he's right there. He's gonna go. It's a big fish, Nick. It's a big fish. Oh, dude, did you see his, did you see his tail? I, I honestly, I was looking at the screen of the cameras, I didn't really have a glimpse of it. Yeah, he, he's not the biggest, but he's definitely one to respect. Just by the tail, he's, he's a nice fish. Let's just land him. Yeah. That's all we gotta do, land him. We have all the time in the world, so. Well, maybe an hour. Well, yeah, he's nose diving. Come on, baby. He just doesn't want to come out to the light. Oh, that didn't feel good. He does not want to come out. You want to come get the camera, Nick? This humidity does not help. I'm sweating. Oh, I 
feel rocks. Uh oh. Don't, don't let that be our doom. I feel rocks. I can see that. Here, Nick. Yeah. Your turn. Oh. <laughs> I'm tired. He's already at the shore. Whew. Yeah, just play it soft with him. Just because I don't know how the line is. Oh, I see him. I see him. He's not giant, giant, but he's a nice one. Is he going? Yeah, he's going. Oh, all right. If you need a switch, just let me know. Yep, no worries. Yeah, uh, just play it safe. The, the line's kind of frayed. Got it. We really gotta land this fish. Oh, he's right there. Let's go. Yeah, I see him too. Come on, a little closer, Nick. A little closer. Let's go, come on. Yeah, come on, come on. Take it easy, 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 easy. Come on, come on. Let's go! That's a beast! That's a beast, Nick! Dude, my, my feet's all soaked, but I don't care. Alright, you'll hold it to the nose. Hold it right to the nose. 83. Oh. 83 total length. Damn, guys. I finally got the touch of sturgeon. Nick and I, last year, it was in August, we came out. We hooked two and we never successfully landed both of them. We had one right at the shore, but um, over at the dam, it's kind of sketchy. So you never, I wouldn't recommend doing this right below the dam where we were. But over here, you can see the water's a lot calmer. My crispy boots is fully soaked, but I don't care. All right, well, here she goes. Just trying to, barbless hook pops right out. So let's return this beast. All right, here you go, big mama. Here you go, mama. I really appreciate you. There she goes. Ooh, that power though. <sighs> Let's go. Oh. oh man, my butt's wet. My knees are wet, I don't care. <laughs> Boots are full of water, but I don't care. Check the line. The line is slightly beat up, but it would have held up, man. I'm not exactly sure how the filming was because in that moment, I didn't really care about the cameras. I was just trying to land that fish, so. I've been letting this camera run just so that you guys can see a sturgeon bite, right? So I basically set up the camera just looking on a rod just in case a sturgeon bit. After like 90 gigabytes of recording, I turn off the camera. Sure enough, like 20, 25 minutes later after turning off the camera, we got a fish. Luckily, we hooked him up and we successfully landed him. 83 incher, 83, 84, so basically a seven footer. I'm gonna cook me up some some dinner and maybe cook Nick up some elk meat too and then uh, after that if Nick doesn't get one then we're gonna go to bed and we will see you guys in the a.m. Fish on? Fish on! Fish on! <laughs> I'm sorry! Giant? No, oh! Oh! Oh no. Oh no. Did he pop off? He, he might just be running in. Just real, 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 real. Just real. Did he pop off? Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was a fish, dude. That was a fish. I saw that it. That was a fish. He was on there. Let's see what happened. Did you like, did your hook pop off or did he just like come off? That was 100% a fish. No, that, yeah, I know that was Dude, you set the hook and he was on. We were just talking about how we're, we might get another one. I look at Nick's rod and his rod was just bouncing up and down. And Nick set the hook and the fish was on for a, for a moment there, but we're gonna see what happened. Whether the hook came off or the hook just popped out or you know, something snapped off. We don't know. We're going to examine it right here. What happened, Nick? He just came off? Yeah, it looked like he just popped off. Oh, uh, maybe just maybe just a bad hook set. Yeah. 
Like maybe the hook just didn't get him. Yeah. All right, so this right here is just some um, elk meat from the elk I shot last year. Um, I have a bigger one in here, but this one will save for tomorrow because we do have a whole day ahead of us tomorrow. So we'll just eat this little piece of meat here. Oh, that's perfect. Maybe a little bit on the well done side, but. This is actually like perfection. Like that seasoning is, that seasoning is bomb. As always, I need a pillow to go to sleep. If you don't need a pillow to go to sleep, consider yourself lucky. I need to crack the window. I'm just hopefully that if I crack the window, like the rain just doesn't get in, which I don't know how that's gonna, Oh, that's gonna work. The meat is kind of falling apart, so that's what this wrapper paper is. All it does is it's, it just helps hold the meat together. And then I just put some magic thread on there just to make sure that this, this paper doesn't unravel. And normally I take the fins off, but right now with the meat starting to fall apart, I'm just gonna leave the fins on there because uh, they're gonna help hold the meat a little bit better in place. So that's all I did. Uh, that's the reason why I have this pink paper on there or this pink wrapper. Almost had a bird's nest, but luckily it went past it. Come on. Come on. You guys can see right now my weight is just bouncing off the bottom. Almost sat down. It's still just bouncing. Almost sat, just bouncing, letting some line go. It's still going. <laughs> oh, oh. Boom. Now the weight's sitting. Our rods are set down here, more towards the direction where I caught mine yesterday and where Nick got his hook set yesterday, so. All right, so today is June 13th, and as you guys saw, we fished pretty much the whole day. It's right around five o'clock at night, and so Nick and I were actually packing up and we're gonna head home. Um, we've both got plans tomorrow, so don't wanna stay too late. You gotta go home and prep and do other stuff, but. That's pretty much gonna do it for this video. You guys saw the whole thing. You guys saw a lot of time lapse in this video because I was really hoping to capture a sturgeon bite on video, but the fishing was too slow for that. So um, I have like probably over a hundred gigabyte of video of just recording us standing around and just talking and chilling around. But we were able to land one fish and it was just a beast of a fish, like a 80, 83, 84 inch or so right around seven feet long. When I first started fishing yesterday, to right now just counting the hours where my bait was in the water it's it's a total of 16 hours so if you look at it we've got one fish in 16 hours 
that's a lot of waiting. Could have been better, it could have been worse. Uh, we're just thankful that we, we had some action because last year, if you guys watched the last sturgeon fishing video of 2019, it was Nick and I, and we were actually up by the dam and we, we like kind of landed one and we lost one. So I told Nick, I was like, yo, we gotta go back. We gotta go redeem ourselves. And we redeemed ourselves with the 84 inch or so. With that being said, I gotta go home, pack up and head up to Lake Roosevelt for some, hopefully for some keeper sturgeon fishing. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys up on Lake Roosevelt, hopefully. If not, then I'll see you guys in the next video.